Hello, everyone, and welcome to another brand new episode of Collider Mailbag. As you can see, I'm not John Campia. He's out for the weekend. He's up in Canada. Canada. I don't know exactly. Yeah, I don't know exactly what he's doing. But I'm doing. I do mailbag a little differently, and for today and tomorrow, you'll you'll see. I'm actually joined by a little panel here. Uh, why don't we uh, check out who we've got here? <laughs> so uh, we've got David Griffin. Yeah, David Griffin here, uh, holding things down. This is uh, first for me. I've never done mailbag before. This is exciting. Usually, mm-hmm. it's just John doing mailbags. This is pretty cool. We get to do it with a panel, have a good discussion about it. So yeah, I'm happy to be here. You're occasional guest on, on Movie Did Talk, you and then you now also on the Flash show. Yeah, Flash. Going uh, to Speed Force. The first uh, episode is mm-hmm. airing uh, this coming Tuesday. Not yeah. not not for the actual show, right. but a preseason special. Preseason show. So it's you, be fun. John, uh, John Roca, John Roca, and Quinn and, Marie. Uh, Quinn Marie. Yeah, it's yeah. a good group. It's going to be fun this season. Lots of episodes to talk about. It's gonna be like it's like six months. I think mm. we're gonna have a flash to talk about. It's gonna be amazing. Nice. And then we also mm. have Wendy Lee, who you may recognize from Hi. the Blacklist after show that we're, we're gonna have start and air uh, next. Next Thursday. N- next so Thursday. we filmed an episode last night, which is the preseason, and then catches next Thursday when we do it for realsies, I guess. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's get on to the first question. The first question comes to us from Marcus Miles, and he writes. Hey guys, love the show. It seems that WB doesn't want to wait and see if their films do good, but are working on the assumption that they will be. <laughs> Suicide Squad is done. Wonder Woman starts filming soon. So I was wondering, what if Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad fail? By that point, Wonder Woman will already be in the can, and Justice League Part 1 will be going through the post-production, with Flash probably just starting production. Will WB slash DC scrap the DC... EU, or will they trudge along with a new approach because they already put so much time, money, and a premature six-year slate out of the, out of that abandoning ship could potentially cause fans and shareholders alike to lose their trust in Warner Brothers. Well, let's kick this over to you, David. Uh, you rocking the Superman hat there. Superman hat. W- DC w- fanboy number one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, I love DC and Marvel. So, what do you what do you, what do you think about? Uh, I don't think it's first of all. I don't think it's going to fail. No. I don't think Warner, it's no. impossible, as Ralph Wiggum would say, impossible uh, to fail. But um, because Warner Brothers make smart decisions, they have their they have their player set. They know that even Man of Steel, which wasn't as impressive as they maybe wanted it to be, still made them a decent profit. Mm-hmm. It still made money. Uh, they also made smart decisions with Harry Potter as that franchise. Warner Brothers is smart. They know what they're doing. None. Of, I don't think any of the movies is going to fail. Maybe they all, all won't make a billion dollars. But it's not going to flop to the point where they're going to like, oh, no, what do we do? We're going to drop everything. I think Warner Brothers knows what they're doing. I think they're going to make it work. Also, fun. Batman v Superman is pretty much, it's impossible for it to fail. Yeah. In the sense of money-wise, they're going to make a ton of money. Kind of mm-hmm. like the only type of Batman v Superman failure will be kind of like with uh, the reported uh, reports of uh, Disney executives thinking that Avengers Age of Ultron was a failure, right? Mm-hmm, right. Where maybe it doesn't make as much money as, as they think it will, but it's definitely going to make money. Suicide Squad, on another hand, is a different story. That's not a proven, like, it's not Batman v Superman, which are the two most recognizable Right. superheroes on the on, in the world fighting each other. Everyone's going to see that no matter what. Suicide Squad, that's another thing. I, a, little, a little bit of a gamble for them to release Suicide Squad as their second yes. feature. That's a gamble. Yes. I uh, actually kind of like it. I think that it's kind of cool that they're going to offset one superhero good guy movie and then one villain movie, mm-hmm. which I think it's going to mix up the flavor a little. And also, I don't think that Warner Brothers would be stupid enough to push out a six-year slate to be like, okay, oh, we failed, we're just gonna can everything. There's no way, they invested so much in it. They've been planning this a long time. I mean, if you're thinking about how, how Marvel has their slates, mm-hmm. they're done and they're lined up, I think DC slash uh, WB is really following their footsteps in a sense. It would take, well, we've already established Batman v Superman is not failing mm-hmm. financially. Suicide Squad, that's a possibility. It's all, I don't think it will, but let's say it does. I think it takes more than one bomb for them to be like, okay, let's reverse course here. So they they set out a slate of all these movies. That's what they're planning on doing. There is a possibility, yes, if like they get two or three bombs or disappointments in a row, they may decide to pull the plug. Maybe for some reason the superhero craze dies down by the time they get to a certain movie. I don't think so. So I don't see that happening. But yeah, I think as a studio, you do have to manage your money and like whatever plans you had. I mean, lots of studios have plans for franchises for certain movies they have coming out. 
but that doesn't always mean that's going to actually happen. But I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think people are interested in seeing a different tone too. I mm. mean, Marvel has a very lighthearted, you know, lighthearted tone. Ant Man was was great. I, yeah. I laughed. I was funny. I left out of there feeling you know warm hearted. All that kind of. How, all can, how can you feelings. like that Marvel movie? You being a DC fanboy. I know. I know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't <laughs> how dare I know, you like both? Blasphemy. Yeah. blasphemy. Yeah. But. Uh, I think people maybe want a different tone. So if it's nice to have DC and Marvel together. That's why I don't understand the whole fanboy thing because it's great to have both. Yeah. I, I, I want to have variety when I go to the theater. Sometimes I just saw Sicario last night. That was an amazing film. Uh, I want like mm -hmm. kind of a deep, dark thriller. You know, I want that. But then sometimes I want to laugh and, you know, and have, do, have something fun, like maybe like a spy or something, like one of Paul Feig's movies. So it's good to have that balance between DC and Marvel, have something darker and something a little bit more lighthearted. Yeah, I agree. So, Wendy, how many bombs in a row do you think it would take warner brothers to say that's it we're pulling the plug forget this uh, dc cinematic universe i would say i want to say two here's what i was worried about and i was reading the question and batman v superman is coming out first yes and then wonder woman follows what suicide squad after i think so. so what i'm worried about is that i am really excited to see this wonder woman movie but everybody is so ready for it to fail already because of the casting choices so what if we get the glimpse of wonder woman in batman v superman and it's not up to par what if, what everybody expected mm -hmm. and then that kind of starts the snowball rolling of oh well wonder woman's gonna bomb and then after that flash may or may not have a better chance at doing well at the box office it's always a possibility mm -hmm. and that's another thing too is Batman v Superman, while I think it's going to be good and do well, let's say it's not as good as we hope it is, it may slow down momentum into something like Suicide Squad. People might go watch Batman v Superman, and let, hypothetically, if it, let's say it either sucks or at least not that great, pe the excitement for Suicide Squad is going to start going down because it's like they're selling Suicide Squad. They have Joker in there. You, ha you have appearance yeah, right. by Batman. Mm -hmm. You know, if you just saw Batman v Superman and for some reason it stinks, then you're like, ah, I'm not so sure. And that's, you know, that's what Marvel's been doing is they've been able to build their brand. That's how they were. They couldn't have done an Ant-Man or Guardians of Galaxy early on in, in like phase they one. They had to earn it. Yeah, they, they had to earn it. it. And so people are like, oh, it's Marvel. I don't think that's a guarantee for success like some people think it is, but it does help help that they have that brand with them. Mm -hmm. All right, on to the next question. We've got... Dennis Yuen writes, Dear the Collider crew, I'm a huge fan and I watch your videos daily and listen to your podcasts. My question is regarding movie soundtracks and original songs. With See You Again, the featured song from The Furious 7, being not just a film soundtrack hit, but a top 40 chart-topping mega hit, what are its chances or winning of winning the best original song at the Oscars next year? The song I have in mind is the Lava song from the Pixar short film Lava. Mm -hmm. uh, a follow-up question would be, is there any correlation between a song's popularity and its ability to win an Oscar? Last year's Let It Go win came to mind, although Happy surpassed Let It Go in popularity after the awards. Thanks, and keep up the great work. Uh, Wendy, what do you think about the chances of uh, uh, See You Again winning an Oscar? It's very possible. I think it is very popular. I mean, I hear it on the radio every day. I'm personally getting a little sick and tired of it. But it's a good song. The thing is, I with the Academy Award, the way they seem to give out these awards, it's not just a, it's never based on popularity. No. So I was really, really surprised when Eight Mile, the Eminem song, mm -hmm. won because that was not at all the genre that the Academy would go for. Uh, I actually, I mean, it's got a good chance, but for it to actually win, I don't think I'm going to see it happen, David. Yeah, I mean, one, I haven't heard all the, you know, still got a lot of movies coming yeah. out, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of, especially all the Oscar movies, as we call them. Uh, it's weird with the Oscars because the Oscars is a time when Hollywood, I don't want to say they pretend to celebrate the <laughs> artsy films, but it's like, oh, these are the movies that we really care about. Let's have one night out of the year where we celebrate the movies we really care about. It's like, no, they actually really care about Avengers, probably. They really care about a billion dollars worth of revenue coming back at them. But, you know, for one night, we do get to talk about films that aren't, you know, they don't make as much money. Mm -hmm. Not all the time. Sometimes they do. They have like a black swan or yeah. something like that that generates a lot of revenue, but not all of them. So the one thing with the music, though, is, yeah, you have that mixture, like you said, Wendy, of both popular and not, you know, more indie and more popular. So I think it's fair game for anybody. I think this song that's on the radio every single day could win, but also maybe a small, uh, there's that, I don't know if the guy's Irish, 
There's a small, is that folk singer guy who won a few years ago? This and, other, I'm, oh, Glenn Hanser. Glenn Hanser, yeah. And he's, and he was not From as, once. Yeah, yeah. And he was not as big, you know, when he oh, first, right. so I mean, you know, you have a guy like that who can win as well. And I see him on the Today Show performing all the time. Now he's famous. So I think it's open to anybody. I think it more depends too on the, the true <clears throat> meaning behind the, the movie and the message. So mm-hmm. you see Let It Go, mm-hmm. granted. You know, it's like this big Broadway song, and I think that's why it had so much push behind mm-hmm. behind it. Well, for me, See You Again, I, I like the song. Um, I think it might have a chance at nomination. Winning, I, I don't think so. No, nothing against the song or anything, but, uh, you know, maybe I'm going to stir up a you know, hornet's nest here. But you take away Paul Walker's death from... From what happened, and you're, let's say that that doesn't come into the equation with the song, is the song as as powerful as it is on its right. own? Right? right. Most of the, it, it's playing over that that kind of montage sequence, and you know, everyone in the theater is getting misty scene. eyes, right? Yeah. Because it's connected to yeah. something real. Is that can that sa- song stand alone on its own? I don't know. I'm not sure. And, and yeah, I don't think it's like it's a pretty straightforward song, right? It's, there's no like deep seated layer meanings to that song it's straight up you know stuff with someone sorry when somebody dies like you know with Heath Ledger getting his Academy Award you know right. people are like well if, if he was alive would he have gotten the Academy I mean I think he had a, get a great performance mm. in the yeah. Dark Knight of course he I think he deserved it but you know it's always those questions coming to mind when somebody dies it's like is it like a sympathy mm-hmm. award you know you always kind of wonder about that you know? always yeah. okay percentage of chance of it winning and percentage chance of it uh, being nominated I'd say nomination 70% of a nomination winning 5%. Ooh. Oh, wow. Harsh. Wendy? Uh, I'm going to go with 70 for nomination, winning 20%. All right. I had to think Ooh. about that one. David? I'm going to go 80 40. 80% oh. nomination, 40% win. Wow. So you got pretty, that's pretty good odds of it winning. I'm giving, it, I'm giving some high odds. I'm going to put some yeah. money down. I'm, 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 I'm going to call it Vegas after this and put some. All the other songs that are out there. We yeah, haven't we heard have, anything Yeah, we still yet. have a while. Yeah. Okay. All right. On to the next question. We've got Andrew Wallach writes, hey guys, love the show. Quick question. I've been refining my Blu-ray collection, but have gotten a little worried. Are Blu-rays are eventually going to be phased out, and will I regret these purchases? How close are we to the next big thing that will kill out Blu-ray? Mm. Uh, I think <laughs> I think it's here. I think yeah, I think it's already here. It's, it's called it's, Netflix. It's, yeah, <laughs> Netflix still. I personally buy Blu-rays because I want the best picture, the best quality. However, I am in the minority. Most people do not. Most people are satisfied with. Whatever they see, like for me, like if I watch HD TV, like a Game of Thrones, right? I subscribe to HBO. If I want to watch uh, Game of Thrones, I can watch it anytime. I got, you know, HBO Go, the VOD, it's on HBO. Guess what? I still buy the Blu rays because when I watch it, I want to see it as perfect as possible. Mm-hmm. And for me, my eyes, I can tell, even though it's not a huge, huge difference, I can still tell the difference between HD TV, it's a compressed signal, mm-hmm. and a Blu ray. So I still buy them, but I am in the minority. I think they're already kind of done. Uh, I think everything is going digital, David. Yeah, I mean, digital's here, and it's just, it's the, the footprint that it takes up. I mean, look at, you know, you go to our apartments, our homes, wherever you live, and the more, Dennis, I think we've had this conversation. When we were younger, we used to accumulate a lot of DVDs. Mm-hmm. Every time a DVD came out, just buy it, buy yeah. it, buy it, buy it. And as I get older, I kind of, kind of step back and make sure I get what I really want. And on top of that, yeah, it just takes up so much space. Eventually, I'm going to run out of room, so digital. I mean, you know, Netflix streams in 4K now. Now it's a... You know, we're out here in Hollywood, so we get to talk to people that actually work on the conversions and everything. And the 4K on Netflix isn't technically true 4K. Okay. No. Um, once the Blu-ray players for 4K come out and the Blu-ray discs mm-hmm. for 4K, they're going to be a better quality than you're going to get on Netflix 4K. Now, again, that's that's nitpicky. That's like, again, Dennis, you want mm-hmm. the best perfect picture. Not everybody wants that. He might be in the minority. I think maybe I'm there with him. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's here already. Digital's here. It's just a matter of it picking on. Wendy? Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I think one of the biggest things for me for Blu-ray is that it's not only the better picture, which is which is what I want to and better sound, but uh, what's going to come with the like the bonus footage stuff when you get a double disc. I really like the bonus features, which you you can't get if you red box something. Which are sadly you, dying out. Yeah, and they're really dying out. Yeah. I know. I kind of want to get the Age of Ultron Blu-ray because mm. there's the blooper reel on it. But then again, okay, so double-edged sword. Do I want to spend the money on the Blu-ray to get it, or do I just search for it on YouTube and find it? 
And yeah. even now, even the digitals now, it'll say like it'll be like with bonus content included. Some so some of them, some of the yeah. digital buys actually have the bonus content. Well, now included. that's the catch twenty two. Now is okay. So less people are buying Blu rays and DVDs, mm -hmm. right? So most people are going digital. The problem is now is now there's less people buying those things, so there's less money. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they have to make. They can't spend as much money in doing those behind the scenes featurettes. Those cost money. There's people filming, the people editing, putting it all together. So then that gets lowered. So now your incentive to buy something is less. But then at the same time, that means less money is coming in. They got it's a, like a it's a circle. So it, it, I don't know. Eventually, it might get to the point where it's like maybe there's not going to be any behind the scenes features. Which is too bad. And that's sad. It's I really so enjoy those. Now. I really do. And also, I think. Um, for me, I fall victim to the packaging <laughs> of the Blu-ray. I love steel like the books. Steel books, yes. But they're they're and if you go in Europe, steel books are everywhere. Oh like, really? You go on, like so, I I'm kind of a nerd in this. I order uh, steel books off Amazon.es, which is Spain, or Amazon.du, which is their Deutschland, mm -hmm. you know, Amazon. And because you can get the steel books, they just sell them like it's nothing. But over here, it's like that's oh, super. That's super. Sweaty. Over here, it's like <laughs> limited. Over here, it's like limited. You know, you go to Best Buy, they have like ten copies of a steel book. I know this is like a nerdy thing, but yeah. I love the steel books. Those steel book packagings are so cool. Yeah. It's so rare in the states. But you go to the UK, Europe, they're everywhere. You can you can like still get the Cinderella steel book Blu-ray packaging. You can't get that in the states right now. I yeah. know you love those like I bundle, love bundles and I love that super stuff. packaging. Know, like I you know. bought that Arkham Knight, uh, yeah, whatever with the, the limited statue. edition hundred dollar oh, yeah, version. Yeah, that. I, 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 I love that stuff. I'm, I'm just a geek for that. Yeah. yeah, but but you admit though you're in the minority. Admit, I'm in the minority. Yeah, I'm the minority. I think that's the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to the next question. We've got. Jerome Ferguson writes, Greetings, Collider crew. I hope all is well. I have been a fan since the AMC days going back to 2012. If you were in charge of Sony, what would you do to turn things around? They had some difficulty, and I'm curious to know what you would do to change it. Wendy, what, what would you do if you were head of Sony Studios? What, what would you do to turn the ship around? I would, first of all, hop in a time machine and get better internet security to avoid <laughs> that breach. Because that breach was what started their downfall, I think. And then they pulled the interview. And that was just not good publicity for them. And then was was after that Spider-Man 2? Yeah, before, after, the, after that after led the to the yeah. Spider-Man rights being mm -hmm. almost not given back to Marvel, but kind of optioned back so that they could have right it. I feel I feel like they just maybe started to lose faith in in their properties and I want them to own it they did really really well with it for so many years why all of a sudden give up and feel insecure was it because the email breach and people read things that they shouldn't have read and that's kind of what hurt their dignity or you know I, and and I I couldn't wrap my head around this question as as much because I really thought if, if I was in charge besides trying to fix the breach and maybe not pull the interview, what else could I have done? So David, help me out here. What are your thoughts? I would find a new property that works. Um, we talked about this today on Movie Talk about, or sorry, yesterday on, <laughs> on Movie Talk. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Secrets Ooh, out, guys. Magic, Hollywood magic. Uh, yesterday on Movie Talk about uh, Men in Black, the resurgence of yeah. a possible Men in Black reboot. And they're going just back to the well, going to what's safe. Well, this worked. Well, it was last one, five, four or five years ago. Yeah. This one worked mm -hmm. four years ago in 2011. Let's bring that back up. Try to find a new property. Find, have somebody who has the the guts enough to find the next Harry Potter. I mean, I hate to say, you don't have to go to a YA book. It's not to be yeah. a YA book, but mm -hmm. find the next big franchise if that's what you need to keep your company earning positive revenue. So find the next Harry Potter. Look around. Do research. Don't go back to the well and let's do more Men in Black. I don't want to see that. Also, I would, su <laughs> I would suggest to them to stop putting the the cart before the horse because you have something like a Men in Black where it's not not I don't I don't I'm not opposed to them going okay let's reboot this Men in Black it's they're like talking about a trilogy it's like yeah. really let's get one good movie in there mm. and get the the fan uh, buzz going mm. that and, and uh, like they want to see it then work on that and that's the same thing that happened with Spider Man remember. Spider-Man, even though it made a lot of money, critically didn't do so well, and I think they were expecting it to make more money. They try to jam pack all the stuff in because they want to be like, okay, we're gonna do Sinister Six, we're gonna mm -hmm. do uh, Aunt May movie, you know, we're gonna do you know Spider-Man three. We're gonna, they were planning so far ahead, they forgot 
to concentrate on what they were doing. And then you see something that's successful there, like a 21 Jump Street. I don't think when they did it, they thought, man, Franchise. this, is, this yeah. is a friend. Now they're thinking that because the first one was so successful, the second one was even more successful. They're like, wow. But they kind of stumbled on that. I guarantee you, no one in up in those uh, head offices was like, 21 Jump Street, that's the one that's going to mm -hmm. you know, hit it off. Um, and then you got their bond rights. They, they may be losing the bond rights soon. Mm -hmm. So... They don't have a franchise. They need to find one. But at the same time, what they should do is go find a franchise, like you're talking about like Harry Potter or Hunger Games, then concentrate first on the first movie to make the first movie as good as it can be, right. then work on, on the rest of it. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, it, it's, it, it seems easy. You have this great franchise. You have a Harry Potter book or whatever in your hand. I know, I mean, Harry Potter is Warner Brothers, but mm -hmm. let's say Sony gets the next Harry mm -hmm. Potter. It's like, we've got this great book. Everybody loves it. Should be easy, easy money. Not always, you know. It, it takes... A lot of things need to come together. Harry Potter got lucky. They cast the perfect set of kids for that role, and they had some yeah. decent filmmakers come along, especially after Christopher Columbus was done and Alfonso Cuaron came on. So, I mean, they need to, like, all those things have to come together. So, like you guys are all saying, let's make one good movie first and hopefully move on from there. And then with Sony, they are, you know, I mean, it's the Sony Pictures Entertainment, but that they're part of larger Sony, yeah. right? And then, so things that are outside of even the entertainment industry are affecting them, right? Because... Sony is losing money selling televisions. They're not the big boy on the mm. block anymore. They're losing money there, losing money on a lot of electronic stuff. And I'm sure that affects the budgets and the money that they can use for their their studio, you know? And so that that may get, you know, part of the <laughs> reason why it's like gets a little more chaotic or disorganized mm. there. Yeah. All right, on to the next question. We've got Tom Bittescombe. I hope I got that right. With the failure of Fantastic Four, the only two options people consider is Fox moving forward with the franchise or it going back to Marvel and have it have them give it a go. But no one seems to think of the third option of Marvel giving it to another studio like if Fox let it go back to them. I think a great choice is Lionsgate. They could go with a young cast again because they seem to really draw in the teenage crowd with the franchises such as Twilight, Hunger Games, and Divergent. What do you think? Uh, Wendy, what do you think about that? I'm so tired of the Fantastic Four news. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm i sorry. I, I'm, I was never a big fan of Fantastic Four, the comic books, to begin with. So even when it first came out with like the Jessica Alba and Chris Evans cast, I was just like slightly interested. And then I, I'll admit on air, I didn't even see Silver Surfer because I wasn't interested in it. So I think though, if the let's, let's just say the rights go back to Marvel... I don't think Marvel's just going to say, okay, now we got to back the property that actually belongs to us. We're going to give it to somebody else. I think they're going to work on it and they're going to work on it well. But I really don't think that Fox is going to let that right go back to Marvel. They have it. It's still a big, huge franchise that just because I don't like it, everyone else seems to really love it. They can reinvent it with the th same cast or without the same cast. Yeah, I, I think Fantastic Four, I don't, I don't know if you got to read any of the Jonathan Hickman run he did a few years back no. on Fantastic Four, but it was excellent. I don't think they would need to, I agree with Wendy, I don't think they need to pass on to Lionsgate mm -hmm. or anything like that to get a, a more of a teen audience. I think Fantastic Four, when Hickman wrote it, was good for adults and kids. It was very, very sci-fi, heavy sci-fi, mm -hmm. some kind of Grant Morrison big ideas like that, but it works so well, and I think you can craft a good story around it, not having to be super goofy like the other ones were, you know, when they, they first did them, but... Just have a good story. You can go kind of crazy with Fantastic Four. There's some really mm -hmm. weird science fiction stuff in there. You can go like, you know, Interstellar or even more weird than that with Fantastic Four. I, I, I wish they'd go really quirky, almost with like a Guardians of the Galaxy with Fantastic Four. So I, I would love to see it go to Marvel, but I don't think Marvel would pass it off to another company. No, yeah. Marvel. Studios, yeah, yeah. I mean, the chances of it going to a third company is yeah. pretty much zero because once Marvel gets it back, they want it back. They're not going to let it go. And with Fox, it's not like they can option it to another studio. I know this is going to get a little, little nerdy here, but like <laughs> when you... When you get to, for myself, that does like editing and Photoshop and stuff like you can buy royalty-free stock footage or photos. They let you use that in your, your work, but you're not allowed to take that work and then sell it or rent it to somebody else. So I don't think Fox is allowed. I haven't read the contracts, but I'm guessing they're not allowed to take it and go, hey, Lionsgate, do you want to you know, rent this from us or buy this from us. It's still Marvel's property. So it's it's a kind of an either or situation. That's why there no one talks about a third one. It's it's either or. 
either. Mm -hmm. And the reason why there hasn't been a decision made is because they still have time. They don't have to decide right now. They can wait it out. There's I, I don't know what the years are, but they have X amount of years to make another Fantastic Four movie or the rights go back to Marvel. So for right now, even if right now they're leaning towards, let's say, letting them lapse and go back to Marvel, they're going to sit and just wait and be like, man, maybe we'll come up with something you know, a great idea in a, a mm -hmm. few years from now and, and, and get it like right under the deadline, but, or they'll just let it lapse and then it'll go back to Marvel just like Daredevil and Ghost Rider did. Cause unlike Sony, Fox isn't in trouble financially. No. Like they Sony is. They, so they many good movies yeah, coming exactly. out. Fox hasn't taken a, a big hit. So yeah. yeah, Sony's, so they, they can like Dennis said, they, they can sit and wait for a little while if they yeah. need to. What I like to see, let's just say Fox decides to do one more Fantastic Four film in a couple of years, three mm -hmm. years, let's say. I would like to see them maybe team up with Legendary because mm -hmm. Legendary is known for like their fandom movies. They have Warcraft coming out, you know, so, and I, I know they're, they're just a production company, am I right? Well, they're they, they, they're they're with Universal now. Oh, the um, but, but didn't they do some stuff with WB like Man? Yeah, they did. That, that they was they did for a while. Now they're with Universal. Universal. Oh, yeah, so but no, I, I agree. That never, that I think Legendary then. would be a perfect home because Legendary does do genre based. I yeah. mean, three hundred. I, I love. I like the three hundred movies. So yeah, I, I, I like Legendary, but too bad they're with Universal. Yeah. All right, on to the next question. We've got Austin Devera writes. Just got done binge watching Firefly and then Serenity. And I've got to say, I really enjoyed the series and the movie. My question is, why hasn't anyone tried to pick up the rights to the franchise to either pick up where Joss Whedon left off or even reboot it as a TV series or another movie? Seems like it would be a good idea, especially with the whole space opera genre sort of making a comeback with Star Wars and Guardians. Thanks for the awesome show. David, why hasn't why hasn't there been a, any movement on a Firefly or Serenity movie or TV show? No money. This <laughs> doesn't make enough money. It's no money, but I agree with everything uh, that they said because it's. I, I love the series. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the movie, uh, but it's just not enough money. It never. I mean, the the ratings weren't great on Fox. Fox kind of messed it up a little bit with the way they aired the episodes. The episodes out of order. Yeah. Um, I saw it afterwards. I was actually so I can't say I was a long time supporter. I actually watched it on DVD after it came out. But uh, yeah, there's just not enough money in it right now. And Joss and them have. Moved on. The cast is getting older. I mean, you know, Nathan Fillion's on Castle for how many? He's extra not going to come back. In. As gonna, much as he wants to, his schedule, I don't think we'll even he's, allow he's it. He's so busy. Marina McCarran's on Gotham right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all just doing other things right now. I would love to see it, but it's just one is probably scheduling, and two, the money. Who is going to back this? You know, and, and unless unless Josh, I think mm -hmm. if Josh went a hundred percent into it. Maybe it might have a change. If Josh said, hey, with all my mm. Avengers, everything I've got coming, I want to do this 100%. Who's coming with me? I think there would be a studio that would mm. do something with him. But the question is, can he get everybody back to do a... And also super? remember, he, he, Josh Whedon does not <clears throat> own the rights. of right. Even though he created it, he's the director, writer, all mm. that stuff. He doesn't own those rights. Mm. You know, I, I, I think Fox owns those rights because they own the TV. And I think they probably... I know Universal did Serenity the movie, mm. and I think somehow they licensed it too universal. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I, I love Firefly. I love Serenity. I don't see it, at least not a theatrical movie release. Mm -hmm. I could see maybe a, a one and a half hour TV movie special. Netflix, let's or say. Like a Netflix mini series. Netflix series. series. Mm -hmm. If Netflix wants to throw in the money, they've been throwing a lot of money around lately. And they obviously would want Joss Whedon and all the people behind him. You know, Nathan Fillion, ironically, we all associate him with with Malcolm Reynolds and how awesome he is to that. Most people know him as the guy from Castle because that's yeah. a way yeah. bigger show than mm -hmm. Firefly ever was. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you could try and get him and everyone else. I think they would come back if Joss Whedon is like, yeah, I got an awesome script. Here it is. They'd carve out some time to do an hour and a half sure. movie special. I just don't see a theatrical release. A TV series is a little hard. And, and, and what you're talking about, money. The, like uh, Veronica Mars. We just saw Veronica Mars. It was a cult show. I, I was a big fan of it. There's a Kickstarter campaign. They raised three, four, five million dollars and they made the movie. The problem is you can't make a Serenity Firefly movie for three or four million right. dollars. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. It, there's a lot of costume sets and all that stuff. Uh, Wendy, what do you think? As, as much as I am a fan of the franchise and I would love to see Nathan Villian again being the captain of the ship and... I, I, I have to echo your thoughts. There's, there, there wasn't enough money made with the series. The movie didn't even, didn't, I don't think really did as well as they wanted no. it to. Mm -hmm. And so for them to reboot it now after so many years, I think it's just gonna, it's just gonna die. And, and if that's gonna happen, I'd rather never see it. 
Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a franchise that I love so much that if they're going to do it, I want, it, I want it to be successful. And if it's not, just... And, and if Joss can't be behind it, then I don't want to well, see yeah, it Oh, yeah, there's no point. There's Joss no not point. Doing, there's no Joss. There's and, no and Firefly. The, and the characters don't come back. Just like don't do if, it. Yeah, Nathan Fillion doesn't come back. Yeah, no point. I'm good. I got the DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to the next question. We've got Thomas Green. Hello, Collider Movie Talk. I watch the show every day. I would like to know what your favorite party movie is. Uh, I have always been a fan of the first House Party and Project X. I would like to know some of your favorite party movies. Thank you. P.S. Sinead and Ashley are the two hottest women on the internet. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yes, they are. Sinead and Ashley aren't here, but we'll pass along <laughs> that message. Personally, for me, I, I actually watched Project X, and I actually liked it. I thought it was funny. I thought it was entertaining. It was kind of over the top. It's kind of a shot in the same way that Chronicle was, and I think it was part of that production company. Mm -hmm. uh, but my favorite party movie would have to be Old School. Uh, oh, that the, you know, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. It's kind of <laughs> the muffs. movie. Didn't launch uh, Vince Vaughn's career because Swingers kind of launched his career, but that was the one that took him from like, okay, that's the guy from Swingers to okay, and then he ended up playing that same character in like every movie after but yeah i love that that will ferrell frank the tank scene <laughs> who wants to go streaking and then running around yeah that, that, that's it for me david uh super bad okay uh super bad the party it's the whole it's a coming of age story i love coming of age stories you know i'm, I'm a guy so especially about, about guys mm -hmm. um and you know these guys they work their whole way up to going to this party having all these thoughts about you know of course getting laid and girls all this stuff and then when it all eventually happens it's not what they thought it was and it's all about the two guys being friends yeah you know it's all about that you know jonah mm -hmm. hill's fantastic and I, that's one of my favorite party movies and coming of age of age stories as well uh, Wendy, what's your favorite party movie? <laughs> you took mine, super bad. I have oh, written really? down, super yeah, bad. Oh, wow. and American Pie. Oh yeah. Oh, mm, American yeah. Pie. It's like I feel like it's like for my generation, it's like the first one. Yeah. <laughs> the first party movie, so to speak. Yeah, American Pie was a good one too, because especially I was in the living in the Midwest at the time in Michigan. I know that was like mm -hmm. Michigan, Wisconsin area uh, that was based off of. But again, I was. I think Super Bad came out right about the time when I was about the same guy, those age, that age mm -hmm. of those guys. So I felt like I related to it a little bit more. But American Pie is awesome too. I love yeah. American Pie. It's great. And there's always the movies where it's like Stifler, the, or no, or where the, <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. certain characters aren't cool. Like I just saw that in what was that movie? Oh man, uh, I'm trying. I'm blanking on the name of the movie. The one where. Uh, they gotta go find that girl that disappeared. Paper Town. Paper Town. Like even though oh, okay, it's yeah. the, every movie always has like all oh, these dorks who can't go to the cool party, and mm -hmm. then the, and like towards the end they like either crash it or somehow get invited. It's like and it's they like get a, the girl. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. such a trope in, 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 in movies, but yet I still. I still watch them. Even though this summer, it, there was no big party at the end, but Dope had some of those themes yeah. of a party movie, but they didn't quite go to a, a big party at the end, but it was, Dope had some of similar themes. Another coming of age story. Typically, mm -hmm. they're all like coming of age stories. You know, people yeah. trying to figure out after high school going, you know, on to college, what's the next the next step? Before I graduate, mm -hmm. I got to have sex or something <laughs> yes. like, you know, whatever. It's always one of those kind of stories yeah. usually. Yeah. I don't remember Mean Girls when, when Lindsay Lohan, she threw that party at her house uh, while her parents were away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And invited yeah. everyone. <laughs> That's a good one, too. I like being <laughs> All right. On to the next question, we've got Zero Richardson, and he writes, Hi, everyone. Your show is part of my daily routine. Thanks for everything you do. If Deadpool ends up being as successful as many of us are hoping for, do you think this opens the way for the final Wolverine movie to be rated R? Even the youngest fans that watch X-Men in theaters in 2000 are old enough now to enjoy a rated R Wolverine movie. And I know Hugh Jackman has expressed interest in a rated R Wolverine in the past. Thanks. Wendy, what do you think? Is rated there a chance? R? Yeah, is there a chance that we will see a rated R Wolverine movie? I think there's a huge chance, especially with Deadpool coming out. I think Deadpool is going to do really, really well. And I think that it, it means hopefully for these darker characters like Wolverine and Deadpool, they don't have to play it safe and make a PG-13. Let's show a little gore. Let's get down dirty and, and have Wolverine really cut somebody up. And, you know, he's, he's a rough tumble kind of guy. So if this is going to be the, like Hugh Jackman's last Wolverine film and he can go out with a rated R movie, I am all for it. Oh, I'm going to disagree with you. I don't <laughs> think it's going to happen. Uh, 
well, as much as I want to see it happen, I remember when Aronofsky was attached to Wolverine before he was supposed to do the second Wolverine movie. I was like, man, how can Aronofsky do a Wolverine movie and not make it R? I just think there's just too much money. I, I think Deadpool is going to do well. Mm. I don't think it's going to do as well as some people think it's going to do. I think Schnepp on the other day said it was going to do like over a hundred on opening weekend or something mm. like. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think even so. Thornton is not making. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Yeah. I think Deadpool will do well, but I think Fox is going to look at that and go, okay, cool. That was, We made some a nice little money on this, but this is Wolverine. This is our flagship character. Let's, you know, get as much people as to see it as possible. So I think the chances are pretty minimal. I'd love to see it. What about you, David? I, I, would, I agree. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, mm -hmm. but like Wendy, I'm like you, I want to see rated R. I want to see the old man Logan yeah. story, even though we can't do... Old Man Logan, the way the comic book is, because missing, the, so, missing many so many characters, characters, but the violence in there. I mean, just I mean, Wolverine's a, he's a violent guy, mm -hmm. yeah. he's a bloody guy. I mean, yeah. I, I want to see that. I want to see that blood. What I'm curious, and this may be a little off topic, but the new Lord of the Rings extended edition that's coming out. You know, they do the big extended four hour edition of the movie. Sorry, Lord, the Hobbit. Hobbit. The new Hobbit uh, is actually rated R. What? What? Yeah. The new extended version, they do like the big longer version. It's rated R. Is the Hobbit rated R? I don't know. So that's what I'm curious to see. Like what I want to watch that and see what makes that rated R. It just got me thinking it because of the Wolverine. You know, yeah. and the Hobbit's always, the Hobbit Lord of the Rings always PG-13. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, the, the extended version of this last one is uh, rated R. That's very interesting. Yeah. It's like, what are the, is Bilbo going to be swearing? Yeah, is Bilbo, <laughs> is there like some sex in the yeah, He's yeah, dropping ass Is there, is there a love the scene? brothel. Yeah. Sleeps with a bunch of. I mean, I'm assuming Bill had to get around a little bit. He had to have a lady somewhere. We never actually seen with a lady, so that's yeah. very interesting. And yeah. also because the all the action was like a CG. It was like all but it was it, like video it is game. rated. It is rated. I was at AMC watching Sicario last night. There were you know they have those Fathom event things. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can, yeah. they're, they're going to show the extended versions on some AMC screens across the country. And again, they showed the final version of that. The the five battle of the five armies. Yeah. I'm getting that right. It said rated R. Okay. It is rated R. That's so random. It's very interesting. So I, I, I would love to see a Wolverine rated R movie. Get back to the question, but like I agree, I don't think they're going to do it because it's too much money. Well, the Blu-ray <laughs> for the second Wolverine movie, I don't know if it was technically rated it was R, unrated? unrated, unrated version. Yeah. I, I, I watched it and it was cool. They had all the ninja, basically the ninja fight sequence that you didn't see in the movie. The yeah. one where they, for some reason, just strangely cut from like him getting, and then it's like, okay, mm -hmm. that's it. They actually included it, and that was a lot more violent. You saw a lot more blood, it was, okay. you know. So I guess m maybe that's the closest I think we'll see to an right. R-rated Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Where like maybe the next one will be the Blu-ray release, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All mm -hmm. right, I think that's the last question of uh, this episode of Mailbag. I want to thank the people joining me at the table. David, where can people find you? You're gonna find me here on Tuesdays, The Flash. Yes. Show. Uh, also on, I'm kind of forget where my camera is right now. Uh, I'm on uh, <laughs> uh, Think Hero Pro on, on YouTube. I'm also on Screen Rant for my writings and uh, at Twitter, or on Twitter, mm -hmm. at Griffin DE. And Wendy, where can people find you? You can now find me on Thursday nights on the Blacklist Recap Show and on Twitter, Instagram, at Wendy Lee Zaney. And you can find me on Twitter at Think Hero on Instagram, Dennis.tzng. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Collider Videos. Also, don't forget to send in your emails. That's a, a Collider Video at gmail.com. And we'll take it all, as many questions as we can and answer them either on this show or on our uh, daily talk show. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>